Okay. Let's see at this point. What what I'll do, I will share the recorded video. I'm trying to find that setting for allowing people to record, but uh, I can't see it. Anyway, I, I, I will share the recording. I think next time I can try to find out how that happens. Then I can give you permission to record. So um, <clears throat> for those who may not know me, um, my name is Dr. Katende, James Katende from the University of Nairobi, Department of Mathematics. I'm part of the team that runs the CAPEC Kenya Mathematical Olympiad. And <clears throat> it is sponsored by the CAPEC instruments. They sell some geometrical sets and uh, calculators as well. So as I said, today we'll be covering uh, modular arithmetic. <clears throat> and uh, to start us off, we'll be looking at congruence of integers. First of all, we look at this division algorithm. It's, it's actually not, it's, it's more of a theorem. I don't know why they call it algorithm, but uh, that seems to be a standard name for this theorem. So it says the following, if, if we have, uh, Two integers a and m and uh, we we let m be a positive integer then we can always find unique integers q and r where r is strictly less than m such that a is equal to mq plus r so this condition here zero less than or equal to r strictly less than m is very important because that is what guarantees that Q and R are unique for any pair of integers A and M. Okay. So this, this uh, Q here will be called the quotient. And R is called the remainder. So uh, I had mentioned this, that the remainder does not exceed M. So this condition is what guarantees that this Q and R will be unique. I, I have avoided the proofs for this. So in the interest of time, maybe later on, if anyone needs a proof, you can let me know, we can make it available. <clears throat> so let's look at um, an illustration of this so that we can understand it better, better. So if we pick say A is 13 and M is five, then we can write it as 13 is equal to two times five plus three. This is exactly what you do in division. Divide 13 by five and the remainder will be three. So here is a, a case where A is negative. If A is negative 11 and M is three, then we can write negative 11 as three times negative four plus one. You might be tempted to write this as three times negative three which will give you negative one, but then you'd have to subtract uh, two for you to get negative 11. But remember, we are insisting that this remainder must be a positive integer. So you need to find a number which will give you the smallest integer that is less than negative 11. And this, in this case, negative four times three will give us negative 12, which is less than negative 11. And then we have to add one to go back to minus 11. So it works for whether A is negative or positive, but you just need to retain this condition that the remainder must always be positive. So the quotient that you pick must ensure that the remainder is positive and also satisfies this inequality. So in both cases, you can see here, the remainder is three. It's clearly smaller than five. Here the remainder is one, it's clearly smaller than three. So can move on to the next. 
Now we define congruence of integers. Uh, so if we have three integers, a, b, and m, where m is positive, we can say that a is congruent to b modulo m if the difference a minus b is divisible by m. So a minus b is just a multiple of m. When that happens, we say that a is congruent to b modulo m. K is, of course, an integer. So the, um, if you do some analysis, you'll also see that this also means that uh, A and B must have the same remainder when divided by M. So if A is congruent to B modulo M, then it means if you divide A by M and B by M, you'll get the same remainder. Um, again, I've avoided the proof. T you just take this as a truth for now uh, because we just need it for solving some problems. But if you really need a proof, we can make it available. So this is just the notation. If, if, uh, if A is congruent to B modulo M, this is how we write it. This equation uh, didn't stay in one line. So this, instead of an equal sign, we use these three parallel lines to say that A is congruent to B modulo M. That's how we, we denote it. So again, some examples to illustrate this. We can say that 12 is congruent to 5 modulo 7 because the difference between 12 and 5 is equal to 7 and it's also is divisible by 7. Um, if, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to simply um, put on your mic. put on your mic and speak. So here's another example. Hello. Hello? Hello? Yes, I can't see the screen. Is there anyone else who cannot see the screen? Oh. I'm not sure what is wrong on your side. Maybe you can leave and join again. Sometimes that helps. If you leave the meeting and join again, you might be able to see. So again, if you have any questions, please feel free to just put on your mic and ask. Um, so the second example here, we have negative 15 will be congruent to 7 modulo 2. And we can see the difference between negative 15 and 7 is it should be minus 22. This is a mistake. It should be negative 22, which can be written as uh, <clears throat> 2 times minus 11. And, and therefore, it's divisible by 2. Right? So we can say minus. Uh, minus 15 is, go, is definitely congruent to 7 modulo 2 because the difference between minus 15 and 7 is divisible by, by 2. Any questions on that? It's okay. So we... We will see some of the uses of this congruence of integers. What one of them is a typical Olympiad problem, which normally asks to find the last k digits of some given integer. So if you want to find the, la the last digit of a positive integer, um, maybe it's a good idea to mute the mic. If you yeah, thank you. So if you wish to get the unit digit of a positive integer, you simply get the remainder when that integer is divided by 10. So you get the remainder modulo 10. If you want to 
use our language here, you work modulo 10 if you want to get the unit digit or the last digit of a positive integer. And if you are looking for the last two digits, you work with, uh, you work modulo 100. So get the remainder when you divide by 100. So in general, if, if you want to get the last K digits, you simply divide by 10, get the remainder when uh, you divide by 10 raised to K. So this, this gives you the techniques to find the last few digits of a positive integer. We, we should see how this is used in a problem later. But if you have anything that you, that's not clear, please ask. Okay, so um, <clears throat> let's, let's focus on the unit digit for a minute. So if, if we have, uh, if we know that P is a unit digit of a given positive integer A, and N is another positive integer. If I want to get the unit digit of A raised to N, I simply need to get the unit digit of P raised to N, where P is the last digit of A. So if I'm interested in the last digit of A raised to N, it's, uh, I don't need to bother with the whole of A, I just need to look for the last digit of A and raise it to N. And now the unit digit of this new number will be the unit digit of A raised to N. Again, this can be proved, but I have avoided all the proofs in this uh, talk for the sake of time. But I hope it makes sense. So uh, we look at some special cases. If, if, a, if the unit digit is 0, 1, 5, and 6, then <clears throat> any power of P will always end with the same uh, digit. So if, if, for instance, if um, any, any number that uh, ends with a zero, if you raise it to N, it will still end with a zero. Any number that ends with a one, you raise it to N, it will still end with a one, and so on. Any number ending with five or six, raised to N will end with either five or six. So, that covers those first four. Another special case is uh, four and nine. I have a question. Yes, Levy. Please define unit units digits. It's just the last digit of uh, a positive integer. Clear, clear, clear. Yes. So if the last digit is either four or nine, <clears throat> Then the sequence of units digit for PN is periodic with a period of two. Now you can test this to find which the what units digits will be. So for instance, if uh, you get four squared, the units digit is is what is six, and then four cubed, the unit digit will be four. So it will be vary, varying from six four six four. That's why we say a period of two. Period of two means repeats after every two. Numbers. So it will run from four, six, four, six, four, six, and so on. For <clears throat> nine, the units digit of different powers of nine will alternate between one and nine. So nine squared, for instance, will be 81, which has a unit digit of one. Then 81 times nine will definitely end with nine. And therefore, they, they'll keep alternating and repeating the period of two. And uh, you can also check this on your own, two, three, seven, and eight. If those are the last digits of any integer, then P raised to N uh, will, the unit digit of P raised to some power N <clears throat> will alternate, will repeat rather with a period four. So for instance, if you take two, uh, Two squared will give you four. Two cubed will give you eight. Uh, two raised to four will give you 16. And two raised to five will give you 32, which takes you back to two again. So it keeps going round and round in fours. You can try that for three, seven, and eight as well. And you will see that the units digit will keep 
repeating. There are four, uni four unique ones, but they keep repeating every four numbers. Does that uh, make sense? Yeah. Thank you. So again, we, we look at a few more special cases. <clears throat> at any time you have uh, five raised to some positive integer, the last two digits will be 25. Again, all this can be proved, but uh, if you need the proof, let me know. We shall make it available. So if the last two digits of six raised to N will follow this pattern, you'll have 36, 96, 76, and 56. Then it repeats again after that. So this is consecutive powers of six. The last two digits of four consecutive powers of six. And then after that, the next four consecutive powers of six will have the same numbers in that sequence as the last two digits. So the next one is um, the last two digits of seven raised to n again will run like that, uh, 0, 7, 49. So 0, 7 here will not occur when we have only seven. I think you have to, you have to consider n to be greater than or equal to two. So of course, seven squared is 49. Seven cubed is what? Is it 243? And so on. <clears throat> and then it comes to zero one. And this will repeat. These last two digits will always repeat in sequence, this repeated sequence of four numbers. As you get consecutive powers of, of seven. So um, these are some tricks you can use when you're trying to solve the Olympiad problems. Uh, you just need to keep them in mind. And uh, 76 is a special number. The last two digits will always be the same as the number itself, 76. Last two digits of any power of 76. So this is particularly useful when you are working with the the multiple choice problems, because there you may not need to prove anything. But if you are thinking about the third round of the Math Olympiad, maybe you need some more of the proof, or to understand more of the proof. Is this uh, OK? Can I move on? Yeah, you can. So now. <clears throat> We get our hands uh, busy a bit with a question. Um, it says, we have a three digit number, which is divided by two, three, four, five, and seven. And the remainders are all one. When you divide the, the number by any of these numbers, the remainders will be one. Did I leave out six? may have left out six. So find the minimum and maximum values of all such three digit numbers. So let's see how that works. Um, I think it's fine. I didn't leave out six. So let's, um, let me give you time to try and solve this or should I proceed to the solution? Maybe one minute to have a go at it. Share some ideas if you have them. So let's just go to the solution. So the, the uh, first thing will, pardon? Oh, I think I, I I figured out the solution. Okay, proceed. Okay, so we know if anything is divisible by some given numbers, yes, which must be divisible by the LCM of those numbers. And therefore, if anything should leave a given remainder, when divided by some given numbers, it must also leave the same remainder when divided by the LCM of those numbers. So I will find some number, some number 
which leaves a remainder of one when divided by the LCM of the given numbers. The LCM by calculation is 420. Then uh, I add one and get 421, and that will be the smallest such uh, digit. Then such three digit number. Then any other three digit number which uh, will behave that way should be of the form 420k plus one. And yes. the next one is 8, 841. When we add any other 420, uh, it exceeds a thousand and it's no longer three digit. So the minimum is 420 and maximum is 8, 4, 421, and maximum is 841. Yes, that's correct. And uh, those, those are the only two three digit numbers that work. Yeah. There's no other. Uh, so, um, uh, what is what is on the screen is exactly what uh, John has just shared. So you get the LCM is 420, and the number we seek must be in the form 420k plus one, so that uh, when you divide by any of these numbers, the remainder will be one. So you can uh, get all the numbers by varying k. So when k is, uh, is 1, you will have 421. And when k is 2, you will get 841. And uh, as Yoshi mentioned, if you take any other value of k, if k is 3, you go beyond the three-digit numbers. And we are just interested in three-digit numbers. So that means that's, 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 that's the answer. The maximum is 840, the minimum is 841, sorry, and the minimum is... 421. So let's move on to the next challenge. So here it says uh, it is known that these four numbers 2726, 4472, 5054. 6,412 have the same remainder when they are divided by a two-digit two digit natural number M. So we need to find the value of M. So again, I can let you try this for a couple of minutes before we show the answer. You have to recall what it means when uh, two numbers have the same remainder when they're divided by m. It means it must be congruent modulo m. You could use that in your answer. So our one minute is almost over. I don't know if anyone is making any progress or should I move uh, on to the answer? Uh, doctor. Yes. I've made some progress. Yes. Okay, so I, I first uh, saw, as you did in the previous solution, Yes. if, if a number leaves a remainder, of maybe R, yes. then divided by, let's say M, 
then the number can be of form mk plus r that, that's correct so we assume maybe 27 26 is of the form mk1 plus r1 plus r it's the same r they were leaving the same remainder mm. then we assume 44 72 is of the form mk2 plus r mm -hmm. and so on through 64 12 of the form mk4 plus r so we'll realize whenever we subtract any of those numbers, the remainder vanishes. Yes. And therefore, uh, M is divisible. A M can divide the difference of any two of those numbers. Yes, that's correct. So we can, we can begin subtracting, subtracting those numbers. I will subtract the, the two of those numbers, uh, any two of them. Mm. And then we'll find some 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 given numbers. Another set. Am I the only one who has lost Yoshi? Can anyone hear? No. Yeah, looks like he has bad network. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, what I'll do, I will, he was on the right track. I will just go to the solution. So, um, <clears throat> exactly what he said was right. Any two of the numbers will be congruent modulo M because they leave the same remainder when divided by M. By congruent modulo M, it means a difference of any pair of those two numbers will be divisible by, by M. So we use that <clears throat> for the first two we get the difference between the first two. And we know that uh, this, this uh, vertical line simply means that M divides whatever number appears on the right-hand side of the line. So the difference between these two is 1746 and M divides 1746. We can do the prime factorization. Again, M divides the difference between the next two numbers and the difference is 582. And then we can factorize 582 to get two times three times 97. We do the same for the third one. We get 1358 as the difference between 64, 12 and 5054. And this, there should be an equal sign here. I think there's a mistake here. Can be factorized at two times seven times 97. So, um, So 1358 uh, should be equal to two times seven times 97. So the, the only common divisor for all the three is uh, 97. So the two digit number that we are looking for will be 97. And any other common divisor will either be uh, one digit uh, or uh, if it's two digits, it's not common or it would be more than two digits. So the number we are looking for must be 97, common divisor. So 97 will divide all the three numbers and it's the only two digit number which will divide and leave the same remainder under the given conditions. Now, um, is this making sense? Akhtari, for the second question, I think there was uh, some misunderstanding. I go back to the previous question. Yes. The second question, the second question. This one, this one. Even the first one. <laughs> Maybe you need to be a little more specific. Ask the question where was the problem? In the maximum. Pardon? Maximum digit. What's wrong with the maximum? That 840. You want it to be what? 
uh, you where you can obtain it. Yeah. Okay. So um are you okay with the first part which says we must find the least common multiple of these yeah. numbers? Yeah, it's um, yes. Yeah. So the number we are looking for must leave remainder one when divided by any one of these numbers. So we need uh, that number to be equal to the LCM of the five numbers, uh, a multiple of the, L of the LCM of the five numbers plus one. Up to that point, we are fine. Yes, we are fine. So the number we are looking for must be in this form where k is an integer. So to find these numbers, we just keep varying the values of k, right? So when k is one, this will be 420 plus one, right? Yeah. And you can take that this number will leave remainder one when divided by any one of these five numbers. So we can change k again to the next positive integer two. So 420 times two will give us 840. Oh. Plus one will give us 841. I get it. Okay. Thank you. So is everyone happy? Doctor, about the... Yes? About the positive integers that you are using there as K, mm. do we use the ones that are in the bracket? Because uh, I'm only seeing that you're using one, two, you see, what, the number we are looking for must take this form, a multiple of 420 plus 1. So to get different multiples of 420, we keep changing the value of k. k can be 1. k can be any positive integer. But we have a restriction. Our restriction is that the, we are looking for a three-digit number. So we want x to be a three-digit number. So when k is 1, we have a three-digit number. When k is 2, we still have a three digit number. Anything else after that will give us a number that's bigger than three digits. So we can't pick any other numbers. Oh, we get Thank it. you, we are fine, we are fine. Mm. Yeah. You're okay. Good. Yeah, to question two now. So what's the problem with this one? Do I go to the solution or and you, you still want to read it first? Let's go to the solution. So um, remember we said that two numbers uh, are congruent modulo M if they leave the same remainder when divided by, by M, right? Yes. Good. So, and if two numbers are congruent modulo M, their difference will also be divisible by, by M. Yes. So we know that M must divide this difference. Correct? All these three. Yes, are correct. That is correct. And the differences we... Yeah, so 4,472 minus 27, 26 will give us 1746, right? Yeah. M must divide that number. Yes. So we, we, <clears throat> we need to look for the common factors of these three numbers, right? But our target is a two-digit number which divides all these three. Right? Yeah. Yes. So if we write each of them get the prime factorization of each of them, this is what we have. 1746 will be two times three squared times 97. 582 will be two times three times 97. And here there's a typing error. So I, I this 1358 should be equal to two times seven times 97. So the only two digit number that divides all these three will be 97, right? Yeah. If you try to get yeah. another two digit number, yes. it, will not, it will not be common. And uh, any other number beyond that will be bigger than a two digit number. Yeah. 
What yeah, we are me? together. No. We... Yes. What if what if you take uh, 50, 54 and minus 44, 72? And what if you didn't take continuously the way, the way they were arranged? It, it, it should still work. Oh, okay. Yeah, but uh, you must use all the numbers. But the idea here is uh, okay. any factor of 4472, you want all the factors to be common. So here, um, I think it makes sense. What, what you can do, try, try pairing the map differently on your own and you will see that you should get the same answer. But this one makes more sense because you work with smaller numbers, right? Because you, yeah. you subtract the numbers that are closer to each other. So you, work, you end up working with smaller numbers instead of making your work harder. Are we together there? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> so the next question is this. Find the smallest positive integer n such that which lies between 1,000 and uh, 1,100. And uh, such that this number is divisible by 10. So this number is, we don't know what n is, but we need to find the smallest possible n, which lies between 1,000 and 1,100, such that this number here is divisible by 10. You can uh, try it out. I think in, in the interest of time, maybe I can just go to the solution. But if you want to try it out, I can give you one minute. So I'll just move to the solution. So we let this number be equal to n. This uh, the sum of these four powers of n. We, we give them this big name, capital N. Um, now, <clears throat> if, if you're to divide this by 10, uh, it means you are looking for just the last digits, right? of each of these numbers. It's the same as adding the last digit of n1, the, the last digit of this raised to n, and the last digit of two raised to n, and last digit of three, 1333 raised to n, and so on. So if you want the last digits, n will be, if you divide n by 10, it will be congruent to, to this modulo 10, right? Because modulo 10 simply means you're getting the last digit. Yeah. Okay. Now, under these circumstances, we need to estimate the minimum value of n. I think I, the slide I skipped, which has the properties of. Uh, oh, yeah. Anyway, we'll just take this as the. 
I will try to explain what it is. Or well, maybe before I proceed, I can try to write down what was supposed to be on that slide. For some reason, the slide did not appear. I think there's some formatting issue. I'll just try to do some writing here. Um, oh, there it's writing. So um, I think what we need here is this. If A is congruent to B, say mode, Suppose this is true, then this will also be true. I can raise A to N and I will still retain the congruence. So now you can use this technique recursively to solve a problem or you can use this property. So I can raise both sides of the congruence to N and it will still be true, it will still be preserved, right? So that is exactly what's happening here. Now, um, <clears throat> we, we might use this again later. Uh, let me for now clear it and remove the... There. So, um, so we now just need to test. Since we know that our values of n lie between 1,000 and uh, 1,100, we can start by testing n is equal to 1,000. And uh, again, we are interested in the remainder when divided by 10. So this one will definitely give you one when divided by 10. If n is 1,000, you will have four times 250. Uh, the same with here, up here, four times 250. And on this other side, uh, two times 500. So, but two raised to four when uh, the remainder, when this is divided by uh, by 10 will be what? It will be six, 16, right? So remainder will be six. When you divide this by 10, the remainder is one, three raised to four is 81. When you divide four squared by 10, the remainder will be six. And then we apply that uh, rule that you can you can <clears throat> raise both sides of our congruence to the same power, and it still remains the same. Now, if you add all these, one plus six is seven plus seven is fourteen. Fourteen divided by ten will leave remainder four. So fourteen is congruent to four modulo ten. Now we need this number to be divisible by 10. So if n is 1,000, it leaves remainder 4 when divided by 10. So 1,000 will not work. Since we are looking for the minimum, we just try the next largest number. And it turns out that for n is equal to 1,001, this will work. Uh, when n is 1,001, you simply replace, multiply this by an extra 2 to get two raised to 1,001, because this one is already two, two, two times, two raised to 1,000. If you multiply it by two, you get two raised to 1,001. Use the same idea for the rest, and this is what you end up with. Now the remainders will not change. For two raised to four, uh, for this one, the remainder was six. So now you'll simply multiply the remainder by two. Remainder here was six, simply multiply it by two to get the next remainder divided by 10. Here, the remainder is already known for this one when divided by 10, it is six. No, it's one, sorry. So you multiply by three. And then four squared, the remainder is six. But then you're multiplying by an extra four. So once you do that, you, you Again, get the remainder when all these are divided by 10. Six times two is 12. It gives you remainder two when divided by 10. One times three is four. It will give you 
three. Uh, one times three is three, sorry. So it gives you remainder three when divided by 10. And six times four is 24. It gives you remainder four when divided by 10. When you add all this, you get 10, I think, which gives you remainder zero when divided by 10. And therefore, it means that when n is equal to 1001, this number will be divisible by 10. So the smallest n that works is 1001. We've confirmed that 1000 does not work. And the next one that works is 1001. So the smallest n that works is 1001. So this is basically by inspection. A bit of trial and error. And that's uh, what? Excuse me, sir. Yes. Um, Someone was talking. Yes. Um, in such a case, will it uh, mean that if 101 doesn't work, I go to 102, then 103, and so forth? Pardon? If 101 doesn't work, does it mean that I proceed to 102 and 103 and so forth? No, it's 1,000. It's not 100. Yes, 1,000. 1, Does it yes, mean that so, I go to 1,001? Yes, 1, yes. Usually the way these problems are set, you would not have to go very far to find one. Okay. Yeah. So ideally it is set in such a way that uh, once you figure out what to look for, you do not have to look for it very far. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Most of them will be set that way deliberately. You don't have to check so many cases. <clears throat> so here is another example. It says write down the last four digits of the number seven raised to 128. So I will just run to the solution because of time. So uh, we use a recursive technique. We're interested in uh, 7 raised to 128, but you can start with 7 raised to 4. And we know that 7 raised to 4 is equal to 2,401. And uh, when you divide this by 10 raised to 4, just hold on, what does the question say? The last four digits, yes. If you're looking for the last four digits, you need to get the remainder when you divide by 10 raised to 4. So we, first of all, get 7 raised to 4, which is 2,401. And this gives us 2,401 when you, when you divide by 10 raised to 4. It will give you that as a remainder. <clears throat> so you can now uh, recursively get higher powers of 7. So if you square this one, we'll get 7 raised to 8. And uh, it's the same as squaring 2,401. But 2,401 can be split into these two numbers, 2,400 plus 1. And you square. And when you expand this, this is what you end up with. And uh, it means it will leave... This one will definitely be divisible by 10 raised to 4 or 10,000. So it doesn't give you any remainder. So the remainder will come from this 4,800 plus 1, which is 4,801. So when you divide 7 raised to 8 by 10,000, the remainder will be 4,801. So you notice the, the reason you picked 7 raised to 4 is because it ends with 0, 1. And you can have 2,400 here so that when you square this, this first number will be divisible by 10,000. And then you can get your remainder from what is left. So you keep raising the powers using the same ideas until you get to the last one. 7 raised to... This should be squared. This, this 2 should not be down here. It should be up. Again, another typing error. I think I'll fix the slides before we... Just to 
So the, these two should be up here, should be a power there. <clears throat> so again, if you expand this using the same ideas, you leave this uh, 6,801 when divided by 10,000. So the remainder when this number, seven raised to 128 is divided by 10,000 will therefore be 6,000. 801. I hope that makes sense. Is, is that making sense? Yeah. Okay. So we we now move on to something else. I don't know how much time we have. Um, we only have three minutes, so I don't know whether to do this now or we do this next time. There's quite a bit remaining. We'll go way beyond time if we take this. I think we can cover this next time. What does everyone say? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I I think we the reason is because we had to repeat the solutions of some of the other questions, so it took a bit of time. But that is fine. It's better to do only a few questions and understand a few instead of doing so many. I don't understand. Recording stuff for that. Yes. Recording. Yes, yes, I will send. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any more comments, questions? If there's anything that escaped. Good night. Or if there's anything you found useful. Pardon? Is someone? Yeah, we, we, are, we are trying to get you. Yes. Joshua. Yeah, it's me. I was asking. Proceed. When will we have uh, our card? Is it very soon or uh, we should continue reading? Your, your, your audio is not very clear. I, I didn't get the question. Did anyone get the question? Are you getting me? Yes, I can. I can hear you. It's just the audio is not was not clear. Just try again. Hello. Good evening, Doctor. Good evening. Yeah, my name is Dr. Weber. I'm from Michigan University. I'm a physicist. I want to express my appreciation for what we have done. And I'm, I'm learning a lot. Thank you so much. And I'll keep following your oh, program. Sana, sana. You said from which university? Michigan. Michigan. Ah, okay. Yes. Uh, how did you find us? <laughs> no, I was a teacher before I did my PhD and moved to university. Ah, okay. I'm a member of that group. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You have, uh, thank you for showing up. We really appreciate it. Uh, You're welcome, sir. The audience. Anybody else with something to say? Uh, thank you, Doctor Ari. Okay. Oh. oh, can we get some notes for the lesson? Yes. Um, as you have noticed, there are some errors, so I, I need to go and clean them up. Then I can share the the slides. So in a day or two, I think I'll have them cleaned up. Doctor, I have a question. Yes.
Go ahead. 